Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another edition of John Can, You Can. I just made it to Blanco State Park here in San Antonio, Texas, and it's about 53 miles from my house, but I figured I'd show you since I finally got my Rover King camper together. It took me three weeks to do the things that I wanted to do, the little touches. There's much more to do, but there's no way I'm going to spend <laughs> months in, without getting out and enjoying this beautiful weather here in San Antonio that we're having currently. And then I'll be going on a month-long 13 park tour around the uh, Dallas area. So, but let's let's look at this. Okay, here we are. You're going to get the the full look around and the full inside look. Please excuse my uh, housekeeping. I just pulled in, but I set things up. It took me from parking to now only 30 minutes to get everything put into place. So here we go. All right. You can see the front of my Jeep Gladiator here, and you see the four solar panels on top. That's four 100 watt solar panels that I showed you in the other videos. It'll show you what I was doing and how I was getting all that ready before the camper arrived from Canada. And you can see that wind deflector on front, which is just great because not only is it aerodynamic, the camper itself, it was it's a NASA engineered aerodynamic design, if you can believe that. And then the uh, roof solar panels were put on uh, in a way that it doesn't cause any uh, drag it causes very little wind drag the way I have it set up okay let's pan around okay I want to take it nice and slow this time and show you guys how I attach those panels you're never gonna believe it there's not one hole in that roof from the panels the only hole that is in the roof is the electrical connection which is on the side up right there see that right there okay say so one giant finger huh okay so let's pan around let's get a nice look at this guy here as we go around in a little roundabout way okay so we're circling the the actual rover king i'm gonna have to back up some so you can see more okay here is the right rear quarter of the vehicle you can see it has really nice big double double mesh screened windows that's black nylon military grade ripstop has a great picture uh, plastic window vinyl which is uh, UV resistant and you can see the cabinet on the right the long one that's a four inch wide by about 40 inch long and uh, or 30 inch long and it's about uh, 15 inches tall and uh, the ones in back are, are more boxy like but hold good cargo if you want to but I did something different on my right side here I put the diesel heater inside this panel on the on the right so it has the uh, diesel heater inside and uh, I think I showed that in another video, so I'm not going to repeat it. Just look at one of my videos, and you'll see that I put that uh, panel on there. And now let's take a close-up at the tailgate. So we're closing in on the tailgate. And what I did with the... You notice the, the camper fits inside the tailgate, so all the lighting, your normal lighting is all there. I took a wheel step. This is actually a step that's designed to go over a wheel of a car that I got on Amazon. And I just zip tied it with super, super heavy duty zip ties to create a step. So I have a step that goes right into my camper and it's also a nice size for a table. So if I take my chair right here and I put it next to that with uh, the table, you'll see that a table in another video too, you can, get a nice little table there in the afternoon have a nice uh, drink and chill out so I put my diesel gas on the same panel side as the 
diesel heater and here's the hole for the diesel heater here. I um, finished it off with uh, a, a silicone um, wrapping that I could get inside and downside in here inside the cab itself I have the actual hookup for the diesel. I just leave it off because you don't want that rattling around in the wind while you're driving, right? So let's let me just pull it out of here slowly, and uh, you can see it's connected right there. Okay, and I plug it in right here. Just plug it in, plug it in, right? It goes right in the socket here, right in this hole. You can see it's got a just enough space to make it in there, and then snug it on and voila, you have a diesel heater. And I already cut the um, muffler pipe there, which I explained in another video. And this heat comes out and actually helps to reheat again the uh, insulated hose and creates, you get a twofer, right? Uh, you get a bit more bang for your buck as far as heating goes. This side actually has a table a little work shelf that folds out and becomes a work shelf. I'll show you that in a, in a short video, but uh, I don't want to disconnect the diesel gas can just to show a, a little tail, although it's super innovative and it's neat to have because if you want to cook outside, it's uh, here it's about uh, two o'clock, I think, and uh, or close to 2 p.m. in Texas. And this side, which is the passenger uh, the driver's side, is going to have shade. so. It's a great place to gather and uh, put out drinks on the little shelf, chill, talk. But wait till you get to see the inside. I know you're all going, come on, show me the inside already. Okay, so so there you go. That is uh, that is uh, more of a panoramic. I connected, I made my own brackets for the, uh, for the solar panels. And uh, I also use these lighting these are actually for uh, flow lights on um, a movie set or, um, or a, a concert set. And I, I took those uh, clamps and I Loctited them on and uh, built my own, my own aluminum clamps that everything up there is aluminum to uh, secure it down without having to use any holes in my roof, which I'm really kind of stoked about. Okay, so what do you say we go inside? Okay, here we go. Nice uh, glass window there. UV, um, nice uh, dark. It has a nice curtain on it. You can see that here. It also pops open and has a little, it'll pop right out by itself. Isn't that cool? It's got a latch and it pops out. So if you want extra ventilation, it has two nice mesh uh, cargo nets on the door too. Extra, extra cargo net stuff, right? Okay. Well, I didn't secure the table all the way, obviously, because it's slanted. I'm sorry about that. But here is the inside. Pretty cool. I have um, my cabinets in. I'm, I've got a transformer hanging there from the fridge because I, I haven't tidied everything up. But looking pretty cool. And I have a cabinet here underneath that has can, canned foods and other foods, dry foods in there, snacks. And... Uh, this is my sink. I can't wait to show you that. And uh, up top, I have all this extra space. So let's, we said we walk in. We're gonna walk on in. There we go. See my foot on that thing? Okay, putting it back on and in we go. Okay, we're just going in. All right, here we go. I'm in. Wow, doing it with the video is not that fun. Okay, here I have, um, my sink top, as you can see, I have a total total sink top with, um, this is a 22 by 16 sink here, so it's not a tiny fellow at all. And the cabinets below, which are down here, have the water reserves. So let's look at how I did that. You see the piping here underneath, right? Have all the piping going on here underneath and how it curves around and goes down here now let me open this up so you can see what's going on inside there is the gray water container and these are fresh water and I already have them filled with fresh water
the pump, the actual foot pump is over on this side. Here's the foot pump right there. And you can take this foot pump out like I'm doing right now, set it up, and you see the sink up here, right? So if I foot pump, I don't want to really waste water because it's not really cool, but here's, um, here's the foot pump. I'm going to depress it. And you see the water starting to go through. See it? Already, that's only two pumps. Water's coming out of the sink already. Okay, there you go. You saw the water come out. Okay, there you go. Works fine. And then it just drains back down. It has a plug too, so you can plug the hole if you want or not. Okay, so there you go. That's what the sink looks like. And I made it a little bigger so that I could have a put my stove here on top. So I have an induction cooker stove and an induction cooker pan. Has to be induction to work. So when you put it on there, it'll turn on. So, and I show you a video how to make your induction cooker work and you think it doesn't. And it all has to do with just the, the pan a lot of times. There's my solar setup. I have my inverter on and uh, the solar. Let's see what it's reading. I haven't had it on that long. The solar reads what, um, it's reading, it's not flashing like that, it's just what the video does. It's 18.7 volts and there's 20 volts up there to have, so it's doing pretty good as far as collection. The battery's at 13.4 volts, the current charge is at 2.7 amps, so it's giving me 2.7 amps, and uh, the charge power is 36 watts, so it is definitely putting out cool electricity because I have the fridge on and there's the control for the um, inverter. The inverter and the battery are down here on the front left side. See the battery there on the bottom and I put the inverter on top. So there's the inverter. Everything is grounded. I recommend grounding everything your appliances come with the ground. Why would you not ground it? Why would you want to burn it out? So I, I grounded the solar too. All the green lines are, are ground. And so I grounded the solar. I grounded my controller. I grounded the battery and I grounded the inverter. And uh, here's the fridge. It's a big boy, not, not your little tiny fridge. I brought the big one along because you can have drinks and I have couple heads of lettuce in there, tomatoes, I love salad, but oh, grinding my coffee. Oh, I can't wait to grind coffee in the morning. I have my grinder here. I've got Cafe Ole from Texas. <laughs> it's a flavored coffee, has a cinnamon taste in it. And up here on the rack, when the bed is up, because the bed is currently up right now, that's the bed way up there. And um, it's a, a double bed size bed with a three inch padding and I've got a, a down comforter. I know, glamping, right? <laughs> and uh, a sheet. That's all I'm going to need tonight in 40 degree weather. And um, here's the uh, some of the water I brought along. Not all of it, but some of it. And the cinnamon and the coffee maker. And then I have another cabinet on top here. Um, a little tiny itty bitty heater because I really don't know if I'm going to need the diesel heater, but of course I'll just turn it on if I do, because on this side, I do have the diesel heater on the rear right, or left, excuse me, the rear left, the passenger side. So there's where it's, uh, where it lives. It lives in the very left-hand corner next to the coffee. <laughs> and uh, so there it is. And so this is, you just hit the power button and then it starts to go through its cycle and it uh, starts up and then you can change the, the heating and the timing and, and it also comes with remote control. So if you're in bed, you can just shut it off. It's kind of nice. 
the, again, the picture windows are really cool because when you're laying down, you can look out and check things out. When I get to Big Bend in Texas, it'll be neat to see all those hills and all that scenery and be in the wide, wide open. But this is my test run. So I'm at a park that's only 50 miles from my house. So there you have that. Uh, tomorrow, I'll take one with the taking the bed down opening up where the the heating is and everything else but isn't that cool i'm i've got the basics in and i'm i'm ready to enjoy a nice stay and have a nice salad tonight i can't wait and here, here's the table of course i didn't really show that but it also rotates the table rotates and i have one of those little tiny tvs with the remote antenna so it'll um It'll pick up basic stations, which is kind of cool. Better than no stations, right? Yeah, way better than no stations. Okay, there is the quick around. Here's the, the seats. They're still in plastic because I haven't even unwrapped them yet. And uh, oh, also this, this uh, whole unit here folds down and it, it'll go flat. So all you'll have is this four inch piece sticking out here and this goes only two inches from the wall so I can actually sit two people there and sit one person here on on this side so if I if I didn't have the fridge more space right if I was doing just a a no a no fridge thing but it's kind of cool to have a fridge if you can put one in why not you can hear it humming all right, and it's set at uh, 40, it's at 43 degrees is what the temperature reads on the on it, but I have it set at 39. So it's going to cool down to 39 degrees, which is fine for veggies, right? You don't want to freeze them, so 39 keeps them nice crispy cold. Yeah, all right, thanks for watching. Today is Tuesday, it's I think the 30th of January and uh, really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe and and follow me I I try to do and explain things differently have an awesome awesome Tuesday afternoon